everyone, I'm back again just to tell you a little bit about a program that I use a lot to do my images and my graphics on my blog and that is Canva. Now, I absolutely love Canva because I'm not really very knowledgeable with Photoshop or with any of the big programs that people use for graphic design. I actually have a background in graphic design, but that was, I did that such a long time ago when there weren't even computers available and we had to do everything manually with letter set and things like that. So things are very, very different now. And canva.com is a tool that I use absolutely every day I think and it's just so easy for someone like me who's got no real knowledge about Photoshop or about any complicated programs I've tried a few other ones I think GIMP was another one um, yeah but it was just not not really what I could do with my ability which was zero so I want to tell you about Canva because if you're like me and you are not very good at very technical things, this is ideal. It's so easy to create pin images, social media images like your Facebook, your Twitter, any, any images that you need for your social media, you can do it on that. You can do your YouTube intros with it. You can do your YouTube thumbnails with it. There is an endless possibility with Canva and it can be done by people like me who have no clue on how to use a more complicated program. So I hope this helps you. I'm going to put up a few videos with things that I've achieved um, using Canva like a Pinterest pin or making a YouTube intro, anything like that and I hope it helps you and here's my first video and I'm going to show you how to do a Pinterest pin with Canva. So I hope you enjoy it and don't forget to subscribe at the end of it and don't forget to ring the bell and I will see you soon in my next video. Thank you, bye bye. Okay, so let's create a beautiful Pinterest pin in Canva. So for this I want you to head over to canva.com and when you head over to canva.com you will come to this page and where you see design anything you've got a search box and you can either type Pinterest graphic in there or you can go down here to your templates and as you can see Pinterest graphic is one of the templates. It tells you the size that the Pinterest pin has to be which is 735 by 1102 pixels. So that's the optimum size for a Pinterest pin in Canva. So let's click on this and I'm just going to give you an example of one of the pins that I've used on my gardening blog. So if you hop over, this is my gardening blog, Sweet Life and Lemons, and straight away on the first um, bit of my blog post about how to grow English lavender, we've got this really beautiful big pin that people can click on to pin to their Pinterest. And this is how I get a lot of traffic to my blog. And I recommend that if you're a blogger or you have any online business at all, Pinterest is one of the best ways to grow your blog or your business. And this particular pin has had quite a few repins. I got quite a bit of traffic from this. So pins work and there's a way to make them which is really easy in Canva and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So now we're back onto our work station <laughs> as I call it. This is the um, template for the pin that we're going to make so it's already the right size 
and on the left hand side you've got your your graphics your, your images elements text this is where you can add things to your pin so for our first pin I'm just going to show you or try and recreate the pin that I made for my gardening blog so what I would typically do is I would go on to photos and as this is a blog about growing lavender I will type in lavender and that will give us quite a few really lovely pictures that um, that are about lavender and I think they're absolutely stunning pictures so I, no wonder people click on this pin quite a lot because it is lovely so let's pick one that we can use for our pin I want it to be quite clear that it is lavender um, so for example we could pick this one here so let's have a look so now what I'm the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try and fit this to our pin make it big as big as we can so that it covers the whole area we're working with so this is our picture now and then what I typically do is I go over to elements and I choose a grid and usually I choose this square which then becomes a rectangle but you just get hold of the edges and you make it the size that you want it to be so I'm going to make it into a rectangle like this and then you you can decide where you want to place it you could place it up here at the top or you could place it at the bottom this really depends on your image that you're using if there's anything interesting at the top here then place this um, rectangle at the bottom but I think in this case we can just leave it at the top I'm going to give this a color and if you've watched any of my previous classes you know that I like to match the colors that I add to the colors in the image I either try and match them or I try to complement them so we've got lovely greens here so I'm going to try green and I think this is a little bit dull and I'm a big fan of a little tool that's called the Google color pick eyedropper and it's an extension that you can download onto your Google Chrome bar and and I'll show you what you can do with it all you have to do is click on the color eye picker and then what happens is that any color or any place that you hover over your image picks up the color from that image so for example I'm hovering over this lavender flower so it's picking up the purples and violets of the lavender but if I hover over the stem it's picking up the greens so I want to pick up this green because it's quite strong so I'll click on that and now what's happening is it's given me this number this is called a hex code and every color every shade has got their own hex code so we copy this then we click this off and then we go back to our color background color for this um, for this rectangle and we click on the first square and this is where we can put in our hex code so we get rid of this and we paste the hex code that we copied now this is the exact color of the stem of the lavender so I'm quite happy with that I think that goes very well but what I want to do now is I click on this green rectangle and I go over to this transparency symbol and I make this a little bit transparent so that the picture comes through and you can still see the lavender but what this does is it just highlights any text that you overlay on this um, part of your pin so then I'll go on to text I could choose any of these examples but I do like to choose a heading because then I can make it look the way I want it to look if I chose one of these I'm a little bit more limited I could still use that because I can um, customize these texts for example I'll show you if I if I chose this one here 
very apt grandma special herbs um, and then I pull this up there I could actually use this I'm gonna use this because I quite like this now and I obviously change the text so anything that you want to customize you just click on it and then you can change it and customize it so now I'm going to put there how to grow English lavender um, and I quite like this font so I'm going to leave this but obviously this is now irrelevant so I'm going to delete that and I'm also going to delete this little text here so we could have done that by choosing a heading and just put it in there but you can also do it by choosing a whole um, text box if you for example had something to add then you can always use one of these templates so I think what I'll do now is I might make this a little bit bigger um, do that by changing the font size so I'll go a bit bigger to 64 it's only done half of it now it's done the whole thing that's good and I center this a little bit and now we have to decide whether we like this color the font color and black is a bit harsh let's see what happens if I change it to white it already looks a little bit better but I'm still not a hundred percent happy with it so let's see if we can use a contrasting color C could we use this orange no way <laughs> that's really not standing out a lot what about this softer taupe color I'm still not quite happy I think so far I prefer the white um, I'm just going to quickly check if a black one would no I, de I think I definitely go with the white it looks slightly fresher and more in keeping with the theme but you can play about with this when you make your pin and I'm sure you find lots of different ways to to do this and whatever looks good to you just remember one thing and that is the text has to be very clear and easy to read and it has to stand out as well without being too in your face and it, the main thing is that it really needs to be bold and and easy to read we could use a lot of these um, script fonts and sometimes they can be difficult to read for some people so you really want to give your pin the best chance to get repinned so make it easy for people and choose a text that anybody can read so now we've got your um, your heading for the for your blog post or for whatever it is you want to um, advertise with your pin um, but you also should always mention your website your your blog name your business name whatever it is that you associate this pin with so we head over to text again and this time I will use a heading and I'm putting this heading down here I will have to increase the font size because we can't read that so we're making it as big as we can without taking away from the other text in this pin and I'm going to put in my blog name or my my website um, URL so that would be sweetlifeandlemons.com I have to make it a little bit longer the font that I'm using I have already saved in Canva Canva is very clever because you can save your brand colors and you can save your fonts so this is a font that's called satisfy and it's actually the font that I used for my logo on my blog I'll quickly show you if we hop back onto my blog here you go sweet life and lemons I haven't got a logo I've just got my um, blog name and with a special font so sometimes it's easier than a logo but we'll talk about logos in another lesson so let's go back to Canva so I use the same font for my brand name and I recommend that you do that as well that you use the same fonts wherever possible so that your brand 
is consistent. Now we need to change the color because we can't see the black. Um, we can either try the white, but that's really difficult to see. And this, now you understand why we put this box around the text. And um, it's just easier to read when you do something like that. Now let's try the black. It's still quite difficult, so in this case I'm going to make an exception. I normally don't make two boxes, but I will just do that because it's difficult to read. So we hop on to um, Elements again. We get our little uh, grid, and this time I pull it all the way down, covering the text. I'll give this another color, maybe stick to the green. I'll make it a little bit transparent again. And now we have to send this back to make the text come forward. So we click on this and then we go on to position. We click backward. So that makes the text come forward. And I think maybe I will change it to the white to keep it consistent. So that's better. So now we've got a pin all about how to grow English lavender. When people see this, straight away they recognize the lavender. Um, and yes, and that would be an example how I make my pins for my gardening blog. I try and keep it consistent. I keep the same font for my, for my blog name. Um, and that's how I would do a pin for a blog post.